What's going on guys, Tom here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to implement a 3D pathfinding system in the Godot engine. Okay, so you can see I've got a simple 3D scene open here, and if we look over on the left hand side in our scene inspector, we have a directional light, a camera, and we have an environment with a bunch of mesh instances in here. Now each of these mesh instances has a static body with a collision shape inside, just for collision. And we also have a player, which is a simple sphere with a collision shape on it. Now there's no scripts attached to this player yet, we're going to implement that in a second. But before we do that, we need to add a navigation mesh to this scene so that we can start using built-in pathfinding system within Godot. So to do that, where we've got this environment here, I'm going to right click, I'm going to add a child node, and I'm going to add a navigation node. Underneath the navigation node, I'm going to add another child, and this is going to be a navigation mesh instance. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of these mesh instances here, which is the ground and these blocks here. We're going to drag them underneath the navigation mesh. Then I'm just going to drag this up into the root of the hierarchy and we're going to get rid of this environment. Now you can see here we've got this yellow warning triangle. If we hover over it, it says that the navigation mesh resource must be set. So let's click on that here. We'll come over to nav mesh at the top right and we'll choose new navigation mesh. All right, with that done, we can now come up to the top panel here and press Bake Mesh. You can see that it's highlighted all of the walkable areas in our scene and where we have a collision object, it's blocked that section out so an AI agent will not be able to walk in these locations. With that done, let's come over to our player. Let's right click and attach a new script. We'll just leave it as default and we'll get rid of all of this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a speed variable. Let's just give this a value of 10. And then we're going to get a reference to our camera and our navigation nodes. So we're going to say on ready var camera equals. And we're going to give it our path to our camera node. And again, same for our navigation mesh. We're going to call this navigation. And again, we're going to give it the path to our navigation node. The next thing we're going to do is create a variable called space state. Now this is going to be of type physics direct space state. We're going to create another variable called path. This is basically going to be an array of waypoints that the navigation will actually give us when we request a location to move to. Next up, we're going to have a path index and we're going to give this a value of zero. And this is going to be the current waypoint index that we're at within our path. Next, let's define our ready function and get that space state variable. So let's say space state equals, we're going to do get world dot direct space state. That's all we need to do in the ready function. Next, we're going to have an input function. We're going to take the event. And here we're just going to turn that into a mouse event. So let's say var mouse event equals event as input event mouse button. So we only really care if this event is someone clicking the mouse button. If the mouse event is null, so if it wasn't actually an input event mouse button, then we're simply going to return. We're not really interested in anything other than mouse button clicks here. Next, we're going to say if the mouse event dot pressed is true and the mouse event dot button index equals one. So if it's the left mouse button that's being clicked, then we're going to start trying to find a path. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to project a ray from where the camera is to where we clicked in the world and that's going to give us the intersection position which is where we can then try and path to. So to do this we're going to say var from equals camera dot project ray origin. Now this is going to want a screen position so we're going to give it our mouse event dot position and then we're going to do var two equals and we're going to take our from position and then we're going to add camera dot project ray normal. And again, this wants our screen position. So let's say mouse event dot position. And then we're going to multiply this by a big number. So say a thousand. And that's going to be the length of the ray to project. So now we have our from and to position for the ray. We're going to do var result equals space state. Oops, space state dot intersect ray. We're going to give it our from and our to, and that's going to give us a result to say what that ray actually collided with. Now, in our case, that's going to be the ground or one of the obstacles. So 
coming down here, let's say if the result dot collider. So if we actually hit something with our result, then let's try and find the path to that. To do that, we're going to say path equals navigation. So this is our navigation element up here. Dot get simple path. This is going to want a start location. So where we're going to start the path from and where we're going to end the path. Well, we want to start the path from our global transform dot origin. And we want to end the path at the result dot position. So this is the position in the world where we clicked. Next, we're going to set the path index to equal zero. We're going to say that we've created a brand new path here. We've got a new path. So wherever we were at before, we're just going to say that we're at the start of the path now. And then we're going to do our physics process function. So it's going to take a delta. And here what we're going to do is say if path index is less than the path dot size. So if we haven't reached the end of the current path, we're going to say var direction equals path. And we're going to give it the path index minus our global transform dot origin. So that's going to give us the direction from where we currently are to where we need to go. We're going to say if the direction dot length is less than one. So if we're already really close to the point we're trying to get to, then we're going to say path index plus equals one. Let's move on to try and get to the next part of the path. Otherwise, we're simply going to do a move and slide. We're going to give it our direction and we're going to call the normalized function on that. So normalized. And then we're going to multiply it by our speed variable. So with our player script implemented, let's start the game. And you can see here now that if we click into the world, the player will move to exactly where we've clicked. Let's just try going around some of these obstacles here. And you can see that it does, it pathfinds around all of the obstacles as we would expect a pathfinding system to do. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, click the subscribe button to be notified whenever I release new content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.